In the fiction of J.R.R. Tolkien, Moria was the name given at the beginning of the late Third Age to an enormous and by then very ancient underground complex in northwestern Middle-earth, comprising a vast network of tunnels, chambers, mines and huge halls or mansions, that ran under and ultimately through the Misty Mountains. There, for many thousands of years prior to that time, had lived the dwarf clan known as the Longbeards. Moria's original name, that given it by the dwarves in their own language, was Khazad Dam, which translates as the Dwaro Delf, Dwaros being an archaic English plural of dwarf, and Delf an archaic alternative to delving, from the verb delve, to dig. Such was its size and fame that throughout its long history Khazad Dam was well known by many peoples of northwestern Middle Earth, who translated its name into their own languages. Hadjadrond by the Cinder, Kasarundu by the Nold and Furunujan in the common speech, Khazad Dam earned its later sobriquet Moria, meaning black chasm, or black pit, from Cinder and Mor equals black, and Eascent equals void, abyss, pit, after it was abandoned by the dwarves following the emergence in its depths of a demonic entity of great power, the Balrog. It has been suggested that Tolkien a Euro and ardent Catholic a Euro may have used this name as a reference to the mountains of Moriah, where Abraham was to sacrifice his son, Isaac. However, Tolkien categorically denied such derivations, saying that as to Moria Euro it means a Euro black chasm, in Sindarin. A Euro is for the land of Mora and it has no connection whatsoever. Literature. Equals history equals. Years of the Trees. The Dwarah Delf was founded by Durin the Deathless in the far distant past, long before the creation of the Sun and Moon. Durin had awakened at Mount Gundabad not long after the elves first awoke, and as eldest amongst the fathers of the dwarves was acknowledged as preeminent amongst them, a status subsequently inherited by his descendants, the kings of the Longbeards. From Mount Gundabad, Durin's growing clan spread southward down the vales of Anduin, all the while under attack from the orcs of Morgoth. According to legend, Durin ultimately found a glen of shadows between two great arms of the mountains, above which three white peaks were shining. Within this heavily wooded valley, a long series of short waterfalls led down to a long, oval lake, which appeared to have a magical quality, there, like jewels sunk in the deep shone glinting stars, though sunlight was in the sky above. Perceiving these stars as a crown glittering above his head, Durin took this as an auspicious sign, and named the Lake Yildzar Sent Ram, the Miramir. The three peaks overshadowing the lake he named Barazin Bar the Red Horn, Zarakzigal the Silvertine and Bundusha the Ar, Cloudy Head. The icy cold springs feeding it he called Kibilnar Sent La, of unknown meaning, although to the valley itself he gave the name Arzanal Bizor, the Demrail Dale. Durin chose the eastward-facing caves above Kielzar sent Ram as the earliest beginnings of his new stronghold. All of these places became revered amongst Durin's people in later days. His descendants erected a rune-carved stone monolith at the site whereupon he had first looked into the Miramir, and although it had become indecipherably weather-worn by the end of the Third Age a Euro broken, cracked and faded a Euro the influence of Durin I, the founding king of Khazad Dam, was never forgotten. Khazad Dam waxed continuously in size and population in Durin's long lifetime, until it became the greatest of all the mansions of the dwarves, even before the return of the Nol to Middle Earth. By that time, Khazad Dam was already a name and a rumor from the words of the dwarves of the Blue Mountains to all the Eldar of Belarand. After his death, the reputation of Durin's realm continued to grow not merely due to his spiritual ascendancy over the other fathers of the dwarves as the eldest amongst them, or the Dwaradelf's growing size, but to its great wealth, which was founded upon the uniquely precious metal Mithril, which was universally prized yet found nowhere else except far away Narmena. First Age, Khazad Dam played no part in the wars of Beleriand, and in fact gained a respite from orc attacks throughout the First Age, when Morgoth needed all his strength elsewhere. The Longbeards maintained contact with all the other six dwarf clans, and after early men arrived in Rovanian, Khazad Dam quickly began trading with them, exchanging the products of their growing metallurgical and masonry skills for food, to the great profit of both peoples. Second Age, following the defeat of Morgoth and the dawn of a new age, 
the Broadbeam Dwarf clan now found themselves living amidst the ruins of their ancient home, which had been rent asunder and had collapsed, along with the destruction of much of Beleriand in the cataclysmic final battle against Morgoth. After forty further years of struggle, many of them made the difficult decision to leave behind what remained of Belgost and cross Iridar, to the now great and ancient Dwaradelf, which increased its power still further. Whether these remained a separate clan or group within their new home, or became merged with the Longbeards is not known. At the same time, orcs once again became alarmed and very numerous, cruel, savage, and reckless in assault. In the battles that followed the dwarves were outnumbered, and though they were the most redoubtable warriors of all the speaking peoples they were glad to make alliance with men. The orcs were all the more easily defeated by the new combination of Khazad Dam's heavy infantry and the horsed archers provided by men, and the Longbeards consequently came to dominate the northern and central Hythagla and the lands east of there, although Khazad Dam had always regarded the Iron Hills, the Erbd Mithrin, and the East Dales of the Misty Mountains as their own land. Ultimately, these men then assisted the dwarves of Khazad Dam in the ordering of the lands that they had secured. With the foundation of the Nolder and Rama region to the west of Khazad Dam around the year 700, friendly relations between the Longbeards and the Elves became firmly established. Many of the Elves then became involved in the development of Khazad Dam's mansions as a consequence, and it became far more beautiful during this period. This friendship also resulted in a massive subterranean extension westwards, the Dwaradelf's habitable parts remained in the eastward side, but passages were delved through miles of rock that terminated at a gigantic stone portal outside this elven realm a Euro the West Gate a Euro, which opened out into their country and was chiefly used by them. Kelbrimba, the lord of a region, used mithril lettering on the dwarf Navi's behalf when the latter built these to create an inscription that read him Navi Hainekant. Kelbrimbo a region teeth and I thy hin, I, Navi, made them. Kelbrimbo of a region drew these signs. The west gate allowed the elf Lady Galadriel to pass eastwards through Khazad Dam and establish Lothla cubed Rien beneath Arzenal by Zor, and the Nandaran elves that had earlier evacuated the area to escape Khazad Dam's growing power, returned to settle there. All of the Dwaradelf was originally illuminated by many shining lamps of crystal, although the halls of the highest level were also lit with windows and shafts carved through the mountain sides. These levels lay between flights of fifty or more stone steps, with seven hollowed out of the mountains above ground level, and many more subterranean levels a euro, or deeps a euro beneath the great gates at the head of the Demrail Dale. Every level comprised a multitude of arched passages, chambers and many pillared halls, often with black walls, polished and smooth as glass. Below the level of the gates lay mines, treasuries and even dungeons, although far below the lowest deep of Khazad Dam, lay primordial tunnels in perpetual darkness, gnawed by nameless things that had lived there since the earliest beginnings of Arda. Few if any actually ever glimpsed these creatures, and no description of them as extant, one important feature of the Dwaradelf was the defensive structure known as Durin's Bridge, a slender bridge of stone, without curb or rail, that spanned a fifty-foot-wide chasm of indeterminate depth, allowing enemy soldiers to cross it only in single file, not side by side. Another, steeped in legend, was the Endless Stair, which ascended from the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, where it terminated within Durin's Tower, carved from the solid rock at the tip of Zyrak Zigal. The West Gate and the Great Gates remained the only two known exits from Khazad Dam, which proved fortunate during the War of the Elves and Sauron in the middle of the Second Age. The Dark Lord's victorious host in a region was unexpectedly distracted by a powerful assault of dwarves from Khazad Dam, who subsequently retreated behind Navi's impregnable doors after their purpose was achieved. Afterwards, Sauron harbored deep hatred for Khazad Dam and ordered his orcs to trouble Durin's folk at every turn even though the halls of Khazad Dar-em were too deep and strong and filled with a people too numerous and valiant for Sauron to conquer from without. Despite this, its people began to dwindle from this time, possibly due to the loss of foodstuffs that had been provided by men in the vales of Anduin. Third Age, with the defeat of Sauron, Khazad Dar-em was able to recover somewhat, and it was not until 1300 years later that the Longbeards came under renewed attacks by orcs. By that time, 
the more easily accessible veins of Mithril had become exhausted, and Narmena had been long destroyed, leaving the deeper mines of Khazad Dalem as the only remaining known source of Mithril. With the passage of further centuries, the dwarves delved ever deeper, and eventually, in the year 1980 TA they at last disturbed or released at some great depth of Balrog, an ancient Maya loyal to Morgoth, forgotten, and dreadfully powerful. This Balrog of Morgoth killed King Durin VI in that year, and in the following year Namin, his son. The dwarves were unable to defeat Durin's bane, or even drive it away, for unenchanted steel and stone had no effect on the ancient being, and so the Longbeards were forced to flee Khazad Dayam in its entirety. Thereafter, orcs of the Misty Mountains made Mori their home, whilst the Barog reposed in its depths. Many centuries later, in 2790, driven from Erebor by the dragon Smog, Thracubed R, heir of Durin, attempted to re-enter his ancestral home despite warnings not to. He was slain by the orc chieftain Asog, a murder that precipitated the War of the Dwarves and Orcs culminating in a bloody battle called the Battle of Arsenal by Zor outside Moria's eastern gates nine years later. The Dwarves were victorious and Azog himself was beheaded by Dar in two iron foot before the Great Orc could reach the safety of the gates, but the Dwarves had suffered great losses and remained unwilling to face Durin's bane. Casualties were so high that the Dwarves were unable to craft sufficient crypts for the slain, as was their wont and were forced instead to burn their dead. The felling of trees to accomplish this was so great that the valley of Arsenal by Zor was forever deforested. Those slain were honored in future years with the appellation Burn Dwarf. After this Pyrrhic victory, Thracubed R's son Thra in two attempted to re-enter the mines, but Dar in stopped him and prophesied that some power other than the dwarves must come before Durin's folk could return to Moria. Towards the close of the Third Age a few generations later, the dwarf Balan led a company to reopen the city, including Fla Cube Dai, Anin, Ori, Fra, La Cube Ni, and Na Li, although Balan's mission was against King Da'in's wishes. At first all went well, but after five years the colony was destroyed by orcs. King Da'in was then visited twice by a messenger from Morda, offering to return the remaining three of the seven dwarf rings and the realm of Moria, if Da'in would cooperate in finding the One Ring. The offer was refused, but it is not known whether Sauron the base master of treachery, had any power over Durin's bane. The Fellowship reluctantly passed through Moria in 1319, and although the Great Gates lay shattered by this date, they passed beyond Na'vi's doors in the west only with difficulty and in great peril. Many of the long deserted lower deeps had become flooded and inaccessible, and the Fellowship were gambling that most of its orcs had been killed in the Battle of Five Armies a few decades earlier. After reaching the Chamber of Mazabal towards the end of their journey, the Fellowship were attacked there by a troll and many orcs, before being approached by Durin's bane itself. Gandalf confronted the Barog on the bridge of Khazad Dam, near the remains of the Eastern Gates where the two dueled briefly before plunging together into the abyss beneath it, allowing the rest of the Fellowship to escape. Though Gandalf and the Barog survived the fall, both perished in the subsequent epic duel from the primordial depths below Moria to the tip of Zyrak Zigal, which ultimately demolished both the tower and the top of the stair. Gandalf was afterwards resurrected as Gandalf the White. Fourth Age, following their exile from Khazad Dam. The Longbeard Dwarves always yearned for their homeland, even after more than a thousand years had passed. Arsenal by Zor became the deep shadowed valley which we cannot forget, just as they felt compelled to continue incorporating the image of those mountains into many works of metal and stone, and into many songs and tales. They stand tall in our dreams, with the destruction of the Balrog, the way was at last clear for the Longbeards to reclaim the Dwarodelf however, and it is told that a few centuries into the Fourth Age, Durin Seven a Euro a descendant of Thorin Three Stone a Helm a Euro at last led his people back to their longed for ancient homeland, retrieving what they could of Khazad Dam's once mighty riches. Equals geographic features equals. West Door. The Doors of Durin, also called the West Door or the West Gate of Moria, were created in the Second Age by the Dwarf Navi, as the western entrance to Khazad Dam. In these times, they stood open and were guarded by a Dordan, allowing free and friendly trade between the elves and the dwarves. The doors bore a design engraved in Ithaldin, 
which mirrored only starlight and moonlight. When the moon was out in full and ancient words long forgotten were spoken, fine silver lines would appear, outlining the secret door. The designs on the arch, which were made by the elf Kelbrimba, included a hammer and an anvil, a crown and seven stars, two trees surmounted by crescent moons, and a single star. The inscription at the top of the arch read, Enin Durin Aran Moria. Pedo Melan Amino Euro the doors of Durin, Lord of Moria. Speak, friend, and enter. In the original novel The Fellowship of the Ring, a comment by Mary led Gandalf to think that the message was actually intended literally, say friend and enter. He then spoke the elvish word for friend, and the doors opened. In the 2001 film, though, Frodo had the inspiration to ask for that word and saw it as a riddle. Shortly after Gandalf opened the doors, the Watcher in the Water attacked the Fellowship as they entered the mines, ripping down the holly trees that flanked the doors and barricading the gate. The Watcher also shut the doors leaving the Fellowship trapped in Moria. In the film, the Watcher caused a cave in instead, apparently destroying the gate. East Gate, the East Gate of Moria was known as the Demeral Gate. The Demeral Gate had two great doors that hung from tall doorposts. Gandalf entered Moria through the Demeral Gate while searching for Thra in two who disappeared in 2845. Aragorn also passed through the Demeral Gate during his journeys in Middle-earth. Gollum entered the Demeral Gate in August 3018 and made his way through Moria to the West Gate. The Fellowship entered Moria through the West Gate on January 13, 3019, and journeyed eastward followed by Gollum. Gandalf confronted the Barog on the bridge of Khazad Dalem and fell into the abyss. Aragorn led the others out of Moria through the Demeral Gate. Chamber of Mazabal The Chamber of Mazabal, the Chamber of Records, was a room in Moria containing the Tomb of Balan. It was located to the right of a pathway that branched off the north end of the 21st Hall. When the Fellowship found the chamber as they passed through Moria, Balan's tomb was located inside it and a bright shaft of sunlight streamed in from outside the mountain to land directly on the tomb. There were two stone doors leading into the chamber. Many deep recesses were cut into the chamber rock containing chests that had been recently looted by the orcs inhabiting Moria. In one of these was found the Book of Mazabal. The book told of Balan's expedition to Moria. The last words in the book were written by Ori and he wrote, We have barred the gates but can not hold them for long. We cannot get out. They have taken the bridge and the second hall. Fra and La Cube Ni and Na Leaf Alaire. The pool is up to the wall at the west gate. The watcher in the water took in. We cannot get out. The end comes. Drums, drums in the deep. They are coming. It was in the chamber of Mazabul that the Fellowship engaged in a brief fight with a band of Moria orcs and where Gandalf made his first stand against the Balrog. The chamber's depiction in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring film is loosely based on the description in the books. However the walls are covered with inscriptions in Kuzdul and the common speech not found in Tolkien's work, and the doors to the chamber are made of wood rather than stone. Durin's Bridge the bridge of Khazad Dayem is a narrow stone bridge crossing a chasm within the eastern gates of Moria. It lends its name to Chapter 5 in Book 2 of The Lord of the Rings, in which Gandalf referred to it as Durin's Bridge. The bridge was built to guard the east gate of Khazad Dayem. It narrowly spanned a deep chasm built under the high arches common in Khazad Dayem. This gave the bridge powerful defensive value, for if an enemy were to breach the east gate of Khazad Dayem, he would be forced to cross the span of the bridge in single file line, exposing the crossing enemy to the arrows of the dwarven defenders. The eastern end of the bridge connected to the first hall and through that toward the east gate of Khazad Dayem. The western end of the bridge connected to the superstructure of the main city itself. In The Fellowship of the Ring, the first volume of The Lord of the Rings, the eponymous Fellowship were forced to seek a path through Moria, long since abandoned by Durin's folk. Through the course of this journey, the Fellowship encountered Durin's Bane, a Barog that had survived the destruction of Thangaradrim. Seeing that the Fellowship was overmatched, Gandalf challenged the Barog on the span of the bridge of Khazad Dayem. In the course of this fight, Gandalf shattered the bridge, 
allowing the rest of the fellowship to flee out of Moria by the eastern gate as he was dragged into the depths. Endless Stair The Endless Stair rose from the lowest dungeon of Moria to Durin's Tower at the summit of Kelbdal. The Endless Stair was of such legendary status among dwarves that some considered it mythical, but Gandalf confirmed its existence to Jim Lai when he recounted his battle with Durin's Bane. Durin's Tower and the top of the stair were destroyed in that struggle. The height of the stair is not known, but Gandalf said that it climbed many thousands of steps in an unbroken spiral. The stair was clearly of epic proportions, as it allowed Gandalf and the Balrog to ascend from one of Moria's lowest deeps to the pinnacle of one of the tallest mountains in Middle-earth. Adaptations equals Film equals Peter Jackson's portrayal of Moria in his The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring movie was mostly inspired by Alan Lee's illustrations. Apart from the bridge spanning the chasm, its architecture consists entirely of polygons and contains no curves. Equals computer games equals, the Rug Earl a computer game Moria was modeled on the Lord of the Rings events. The goal in the game is to reach the bottom of a maze-like simulation of the mines of Moria and kill a Balrog. Moria has also been featured in board games such as the Lord of the Rings created by Reyna Anesia. Several other Ragai likes and muds feature Moria as a dungeon similar to the one described in the book, usually containing a creature akin to a Balrog. The first expansion pack of the MMORPG The Lord of the Rings Online named Mines of Moria takes place almost entirely in Moria, which has several levels. The uppermost is the Path of Durin's Way, which pierces the mountain to reach the cliffs of Zyrax Igil. The main levels of Moria span from the doors of Durin to Dolvan View, Zlumlik, Nudmlik and the East Doors, known as the First Hall. Further down in the subterranean realm are the Silvertine Lodes and the Redhorn Lodes, and the furthest depths contain the submerged waterworks, the fiery flaming deeps, and the foundations of stone, where Gandalf and the Barog fought before ascending the endless stair. Further reading, Dickerson, Matthew. Moria. In Drought, Michael D. C. J. R. A. Tolkien Encyclopedia, Scholarship and Critical Assessment. Routledge pages 438 to Euro 439. ISBN 0-415-96942-5. See also. Dwarf, Durin's Folk, Eregion. References.